hey what is up guys welcome back to a new video so today i was going through some stuff that was old and discarded in the storage room and look what i found this is the keyboard from my original pc i think we purchased that pc back in 1997 or 1998 and guess what this is a mechanical keyboard if i remove the keycap it exposes the uh, cherry mx black switch so this is the linear non-clicky type so here's a quick mandatory sound test. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? Cherry MX black. And this is the Cherry MX blue, clicky and tactile switches. And take a look at that Windows logo. Yeah, that brings back memories. I think the time we bought this PC, it was loaded with Windows 98. And the interface is not USB, so it is the PS2 type. So it's not gonna work on this PC. I'll need to buy a converter or something. And here's the PC itself. Now this is a Pentium 2 PC. I think this one has 128 megabytes of RAM. Yep, floppy disk drive. There were two drives here, one CD-ROM, one DVD-ROM. And DVD-ROM we got afterwards. I think CD drive was also replaced. Now, the condition of this PC right now is that it needs a new hard drive, an IDE hard drive, because this is the original hard drive of this PC. And you can see I kind of butchered it after it failed. Hmm, probably shouldn't have done that. But anywho, needs a new power supply. All right, so I've got the front casing off and this is an HCL brand PC. Now these guys are still around but they don't manufacture PCs anymore. You guys can Google this company called HCL. Now, here's the computer. So the front case of this thing is made up of plastic and it has turned yellow over the years because this was completely white. And the top cover is made up of metal and that's quite a solid little cover. So in front we have the fan, floppy drive, slot for an additional floppy drive, the front connector. Now these connectors plug into this thing. Uh, I don't think this has LEDs in it. I kind of took out the LEDs, but yeah, the LEDs can be replaced easily. So this thing will work once again. I think this project is for another day. I might resurrect this PC. I think it will make a good retro gaming PC. I think playing Doom on Windows 95 or 98 will be a great experience. And yeah, so this is the optical drive and it was manufactured in September 1999. So this is not an original um, optical drive to this PC. All right, let's take a quick look at the internals and the motherboard of this PC. Now this motherboard is a full size ATX motherboard. It's an MSI motherboard, MS6117 version one. You can see that model number is printed right over there and because this is a full-size ATX board it's got a ton of expansion slots so two full-size ISA slots five PCI expansion slots and one ATP slot for the video card now this video card is an aftermarket card this was uh, not present at the time of purchase so we had this PCI video card and yeah that is a video card from Cirrus Logic I plug this in so that the card won't get lost or something because uh, you cannot turn on the PC with two cards, two video cards installed. We'll have to remove this. And this is the back of the computer. The model number is BZB2000 Pentium 2 233 MHz HCL Info Systems. And here's the back of the motherboard. The rear IO shield is right here. So I do have the IO shield. We need to take the motherboard out, I think. To fix the fit this thing but we'll do that later on but anywho we've got the com ports two com ports two USB keyboard connector and the mouse connector and the LPT printer port and like I said this is the video card com port extension the second video card the original video card which came with this computer and here we have the sound card and you can see that that's the 
fan so this thing only has one case fan and the second fan is the fan which is there on the power supply so two fans on this case and that was more than enough to cool this PC back in the day because this is just a Pentium 2 PC so you can see this board has quite a few expansion options and of course the star of the show the Pentium 2 233 MHz processor with MMX technology absolutely groundbreaking back in the day there's a little cooling fan here and here's a view of the processor from the back and we've got three RAM slots I think this motherboard sports up to 768 megabytes of RAM uh, two ID expansions one floppy disk connector and you can see I've already taken out the real-time clock battery and fortunately you can see none of these caps are bulging so this motherboard is completely fine just need a new power supply a IDE hard drive and we are good to go and yeah I do have the ribbon cable stored somewhere in my storage so I think this PC can be resurrected into a vintage gaming machine you know Doom machine or you can play some vintage game on it Hexen, Heretic those sort of games and I will resurrect this PC sometime in the future when I have enough time and money because we need a couple of components we need a power supply then I think I'll also buy a new optical drive because I think none of these will be working burn a Windows 98 CD and install it or even Windows 95 uh, clean this floppy drive have it working because I would like to have each and every vintage component working on this PC but anyways let's see I will swap out the cooling fan in front because this motherboard has a fan header here and unfortunately this fan does not have a fan header and it was like this uh, from the factory but anywho this is a project for another day uh, it does require a couple of things like I said the we also need a hard drive for this computer and today we are going to focus on the keyboard so coming back to the keyboard I think this keyboard is an absolute winner because if you were to buy a keyboard with Cherry MX black switches it will at least set you back by a hundred dollars and you can see this keyboard does not even have that a numeric pad so I think fairly expensive keyboard good mechanical switches so what I'm gonna do now is take these keycaps out one by one wash these keycaps individually with shampoo and clean the underside of this keyboard I think it's very 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 dirty yeah this thing has been sitting in the storage room for many years now requires a good cleaning and I think this keyboard will be still functional because it was functional when we stored it back in the day and it's an HCL branded keyboard so here's the back side of the keyboard HCK4200W I think that's the model number alright guys as you can see I've got most of these keys out now there are some keys that are still there on this keyboard now these keys have a stabilizer bar beneath them so I'm not gonna try taking these out I because I don't really know how to take these keys out with the stabilizer bar so I'm just gonna leave these there and just clean them on the surface so you can see the other key caps are now sitting in a warm soapy water solution and that will just take out all the muck that is on the keys Just gonna rub them later on now it's time to clean out this mess See, this is why I wanted to take out these keys and clean out the keyboard. So, let's get to it. So, take a look at this. I've just kept it on the ground because this thing is so darn filthy. I don't want my desk to get dirty. So, this is the back side of the keyboard. And, take a look at that printed circuit board. Yeah, you won't find this in today's keyboards, right? So, I'm just going to take this out. So yeah, this is the front part of the keyboard and check this out. Etsy or peripherals. Holy crap, I thought these guys were importing keyboards from China and rebranding and selling selling them, but it looks like they have rolled out their own model. And that's the that's some chip over there. I think that something stuck over it. And this is the back side. Yeah, now it's in focus. Holy crap, this thing is, yeah, this thing is expensive. 
FCK4200W. Check this out guys. So I took out that black tape which was covering this chip and it looks like it's a Zilog controller. This is a 8-bit keyboard controller and 4 kilobytes of ROM, 236 bytes of RAM and 5 megahertz speed. And the wire just comes out from this connector here. Guys, take a look at that. I think this one came out nice and clean. And this is the best I could get because the remaining muck is kind of stuck on the keyboard and it's not even coming out uh, with the cleaner. Don't want to put too much abrasive cleaner on this, but not bad, not bad at all. And if you look close, it looks like these switches have a space for LED. And the blank space is actually used for LEDs. You see these uh, Cherry Mix blue switches on the Razer keyboard has a little LED there. And this one has a space left blank. Oh yeah, this is going to turn out really nice. So I washed out the underside and the front side. Alright, so just finished wiping off this thing. The casing of the keyboard, look at this guys. This thing looks brand new. Yeah, no scratches, no scuff marks, plastic is completely intact. So now I'm going to dry those keys out and we'll proceed to reassemble this keyboard. So I've also cleaned out this cable and this is the residue of a cello tape. So this is not coming off, it's caked in there, but hey, the cable looks nice and clean now. And look at these key caps. They look brand new, as if they have come out fresh from the factory. So I have washed them and I have dried them. Absolutely no residue of any dirt or dust left on these. Yeah, these are squeaky clean. So now, first I'm going to assemble this, then we put the keycaps on the keyboard. Alright, now begins the painstaking task of installing these keycaps onto the keyboard. Now I'm gonna, just going to use the Black Widow Ultimate as the template for this thing. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so I'm done installing the keycaps. The keyboard is clean. No specks of dust or anything. No dust marks. Yeah, this thing looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the camera has having a tough time. The camera is having a tough time focusing though. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, listen to the sound. So let's go ahead and try this out. Okay, so my Media Center PC has a PS2 port and I just wired the keyboard up like this and it works. You can see the LEDs light lights up, no problem. And if you turn num lock, scroll lock, caps lock here, it also turns on and off on the other keyboard. So this keyboard does work. I tested it out. All of the keys are working. So, a quick typing test in Microsoft Word. Yeah, so it is working. Now I know guys, the lighting is not ideal here, but I'm just gonna do a quick typing test. So bear with me. Just listen to the sound of the keys. So yeah, I absolutely love the sound of these keys. And a quick sound comparison versus the Razer, Razer green switches. I think these are Razer green switches. So here we go. So 
so clicky and tactile versus linear and non-tactile switches. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of this video and I'm very happy with the work I've done. This keyboard has been restored to its former glory and the best part is this is a mechanical keyboard. Gotta love the sound of the mechanical keys. Alright, so thank you for watching and do stay tuned for more videos like these and I think I will also restore my old PC. And yeah, like I said, that's a project for another day. Alright guys, so thank you for watching, do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.